I was into skateboarding. Yeah. And like skate videos were like mixtapes back in the day. Like right, that was the way you yeah. could find out about any type of music. And so, yeah, I would any any sort of like skate video that would come out would I would like hear about all these different genres of music, all different styles, and like that's how I initially got into hip. Was this something called like Flow Zone, like this TV show? Oh yeah, yeah. That you were on. Yeah, so I was on this TV show, and this was in my hometown, and it was called Flow Zone, and and yeah, what. It was so weird. At the time, I owned a little like moped shop kind of thing out of the mm -hmm. back of this garage in Chicago. <laughs> so I used to like like buy vintage mopeds off of Craigslist and, and, th and eBay and stuff like that. That's so cool. <laughs> Fix them up and then make them running or, or working or better. And then yeah. I would sell them. And then that, that was just like how we would make money. It was just like this little side hustle. And then we kind of just fell off like in 2010, 2011. Just no one booked us anymore. Like, was it because you didn't have original tracks? Or that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have music. We didn't have anything. Hi. So today I'm here with Kurt from Postadamus. What up? What up? How so, <laughs> so I actually saw you. I want to say like four or five years ago in Boston. Uh huh. It was actually the first concert I've ever been to. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was it a good one? A good it was experience? amazing. Because I grew up in Hong Kong and I just never, like, no one comes there. Yeah. So then seeing you guys play and finally I went to college in Boston was just, like, crazy. Oh, yeah. And it was, I think it was in, like, Paradise Rock or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then you like, and then maybe it was, like, two turn up and, like, flip the table. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. The, the table fell. All the equipment went everywhere. Yeah. But the way that the computer was connected, it kept the music kept playing. So it was yeah, I dope. remember. And like everyone was just still like going so oh, hard. Oh, no, it was crazy. Yeah. Man. Those, that that original era was so turned up. <laughs> and then honestly, like two years ago, I saw you again in Sydney. Oh and wow! One, You've been everywhere. That's <laughs> awesome. And that one, your whole like everything was like already official, with, like the hoodie stuff, and oh, it's just yeah. like. I, I remember like seeing guys like I'm like damn like even being there from like this kind of like the start like I mean like yeah. 25 years ago to that I was like damn and I felt so proud. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Australia hoodie nation goes so hard. I love. Oh Australia. my god! Everyone was wearing your stuff. It was crazy. Yeah, it's so dope. <laughs> so you were born in Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah. Just outside of Chicago, uh, and yeah, grew up there, and then I moved to New York, where I currently live. Yeah. And then soon I'll be living here, probably in Los Angeles. Yeah. So. so were your parents also born in Chicago? Yeah, they're from, well, no, they're from outside where I'm from in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh. So I'm like out, like out in the sticks outside of Chicago. Yeah. Uh, but I lived in Chicago for a little over a decade and, yeah, moved to New York after that. Damn. What were you into in school, like, growing up? Oh, man, I was, I was like a, I'm a weird dude. Like, I was into, like fixing like motorcycles and mopeds and like little like things like that skateboarding music just all the introverted stuff that people do <laughs> so, it, but it was fun how did you get into like fixing mopeds are your parents like into that yeah my well? dad owns my dad owns a thrift store or owned he's retired now but he owned a thrift store so he would get all these like different things and like i would fix it up and work on it and end up just i don't know like just tinkering around and building yeah. like motorcycles and things like that and what does your mom do my mom is just a stay-at-home mom. She just is, uh, she, she raised before. me. Yeah. She didn't, she was like, I don't know. She just like worked in like just an industry. She, I don't even know what she was doing before she was a mother. She just like, just was basic mom stuff, I guess. Yeah. yeah. What kind of like subjects were you into back then? Were you like a math kid or English No, kid? no. I really wasn't, I didn't do well in school actually. Yeah. Like that was my main thing. I just was always like really creative. But where I went to school was like out in the middle of nowhere. And so like, I don't know, they didn't know how to handle creative kids that much, so they kind of pushed me, like, outside of all the curriculum. Cur mm -hmm. curriculum. Yeah. And so I just used to just, like, learn everything myself, like, pre-YouTube and all that. I used to teach myself how to make music and, yeah. like, how to do things, so that's what it if was. If it's pre-YouTube, what did you use? I mean, I used the internet, and, yeah. like, and, but, like, you had to search a lot deeper back in the day and, like, <laughs> go to message boards and, oh like... Oh, my God, for, you're the forum kid just, like, learning how to Oh, yeah, kids. no, for oh real. Like, that was the thing. I was, like, fi figuring out how to do stuff, and, yeah, rare. How would people have described you back then? I don't know, man. Uh, probably hyperactive. I was very hyperactive. Yeah. And, like... I don't know, kind of all over the place, which I still am. So I guess I'm the same dude I was back in <laughs> high school. How did you get into, you did like a guitar for a band, right? Like Hyper Viper. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't play guitar. I played drums for Hyper oh, Viper. Oh, dry drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was a, a band in Chicago that was established for a while. Yeah, Hyper Viper was a band in Chicago. And 
it was funny. There was they were a band for a while. My girlfriend at the time was in the band, <coughs> and uh, yeah, and they just the, their drummer left. And I used to play drums a little bit when I was younger. Yeah. And so I played drums in the band for for a few years. Did your parents put you onto the drums, or did you want to do it yourself? I wanted to do it myself. Like I. Uh, they bought me a drum set when I was a kid. I think I was like 10 or 11 when I had my first drum set. My brother, I have an older brother, and he was playing guitar. And my parents ended up just like getting a drum set for me, and I started playing drums. And that was, yeah, that's where have, I started my musical career. Did you have any like musicians in your family, or where did you even get that like interest from? No, like, it's funny, like, there's no musicians in my family, no one on both sides plays any instruments. And musically, both of my parents are kind of just like, they don't really listen to music or anything like that. <laughs> if anyone in my family influenced me in music, it was my brother. He just, he would listen to like hip hop and he would listen to rock. He would listen to like all these different genres oh, so of music. so that's kind of like where you got Yeah, that's yeah, so cool. I would just like, I would listen to like every style of music from him. And I didn't even know there were like genres or anything. I just knew that these, uh, the different like types of music sounded different. And so that's what I, would, I don't know. That's how I got my first like taste of what music is. Yeah. But were you always more into like the band music initially? Maybe people in your like hometown were listening to more of the band type stuff? Yeah, oh yeah. My hometown, like there's like a few radio stations and like one of them is like, it's just classic rock. Like it still <laughs> is like the main thing. So rock is like huge influence in my town. But my brother was like listening to hip hop. Yeah. And another huge thing, which I, I forgot, like, so I, I was into skateboarding. Yeah. And like skate videos were like mixtapes back in the day. Like right, that was the way you yeah. could find out about any type of music. And so, yeah, I would any any sort of like skate video that would come out would I would like hear about all these different genres of music, all different styles, and like that's how I initially got into hip hop. There was like this uh, there's this skate video called 411, mm -hmm. and 411 would just always have like the dopest like hip hop coming out of New York and out of Cali, and that's yeah. kind of how I got into it. It's cool. Was this something called like Flow Zone, like this TV show? Oh yeah, yeah. That you were on. Yeah, so I was on this TV show, and this was in my hometown. And it was called Flow Zone, and, and yeah, what it was so weird. So I used to like, when I was a teenager and I just started DJing, mm -hmm. I used to do like turntablism, like scratching yeah. and things like that, which is more on the hip hop side of things. But in my hometown, there was like no events to do that at. I couldn't really perform. So I used to play at raves back in the day Damn. as this like hip hop turntablist kind of dude. And some of the kids that used to be going to the ra they used to go to the raves with me were talking about how they did this, like they worked at the cable access station, like where I was from. And they had a show, they actually had two shows, uh, I forget what the first one was called, but the other one was called Flow Zone, and it was where people just got on and rapped, and they needed a DJ, and I was like the only hip-hop DJ that could like show up on time, and I was, <laughs> and that was me, I was like, I was 16 years old, and I used to load my turntables into my car, this like really crappy car, couldn't close yeah. the trunk, and I used to just drive miles and miles to go play beats for these dudes to rap over. Damn. Wait, were your parents always supportive of you, like, from the beginning? Like, yeah, all yeah. Stuff? Like, Damn. it's weird. My parents never really understood what I was doing, but mm -hmm. they they didn't say no ever. They were yeah. just like, they just let me do me, I guess. That was the coolest thing. Like, I didn't really have, yeah, any boundaries. It was was cool. there, like, a turning point that they became more, like, receptive of your music? <sighs> It's funny because just now, I feel like they're starting to get receptive to now? it. Now? Yeah. Like 10 years after? Yeah. Like oh my was, god. They didn't really understand it at all. And like never, and they're afraid to come to shows and so. Really? Yeah, my dad. What about it is like, they're afraid of? I think they're just afraid of leaving the hometown that I'm from and just like, I don't know. They, I, they don't really, they never really went out to any of these shows. I would always do shows. If anything, they would come to something that was close by, but it mm. wasn't that big of a show, and oh. they, they didn't really understand it, so they let it be. But well, recently, I flew my dad out to Las Vegas, and he got to see, like, up front what it's like for me to do, like, back-to-back -back shows and things like that. And yeah. I think he finally started to understand it, and he's definitely proud. And you, when you started making stuff, it was, like, on your parents' like first-generation, like, computer, Oh, yeah, right? yeah. I had, like, this, like, really... Actually, well, at the time, it was probably state-of-the-art. Like, this just, like... <laughs> yeah, it's probably mad expensive. Yeah, then. like, the, it was a super expensive computer that's worth, like, nothing now. But, it, <laughs> it, yeah, uh, my dad got it through someone at his work. And I just, like, figured out how to download programs off the internet and crack them. And, like, yeah. I bought, like... Or I bought... I, I downloaded, uh, like, like music software. There's this one called Cool Edit Pro. Mm -hmm. and another one called Acid Music. And I just kind of, like, started chopping up music that I liked. And yeah kind of making mashups and stuff before they were called mashups, just blending things together. And 
that's how it started. Damn, yeah. so you'd have to, did you like ask permission to like use their computer? No, no, it just... was, and the funny thing is that they would only use it for like word processing and like typing oh stuff God. out and printing and then like, yeah. so 90% of the time I, I was just free reign on the computer. For college you studied like interactive media, right? Yeah, yeah, I have a degree in interactive multimedia, which is like web design and graphic design and I graduated college in 2004, so like it was kind of early on early internet design branding kind of stuff yeah. so it was cool like it, it there was like really wasn't a lane then back then yeah. for it and so they they kind of I kind of made up my own lane like this web yeah. graphic design thing how did you even decide to get into that were you doing like graphic design stuff in high school yeah I was so like like I was saying earlier like I was I wasn't really like I don't know the most studious person so I wasn't really like good book smart mm -hmm. but I was really creative and so there was a school outside of my district, uh, Kalamazoo Central High School, that had a graphic design program. And I got to, the, the reason why I chose it is because I got to leave for half the day every day. So like, I would be at my school for half of the day and then I would get to drive to this other school for half of the day. So I was like, why not just leave and yeah. go chill? And so yeah, I went to that school and started designing and taught myself that and then moved moved into what I knew after that, like taught myself how to do web design and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Was college something that you want to do or do you think like if your parents didn't push you, you wouldn't have gone to college? Uh, yeah, college was, it was weird. Like I didn't, I didn't really want to go to school necessarily, but mm -hmm. like I didn't know what to do after high school. And I don't know, I, I, I had a, my best friend Pat was, he was moving to Chicago to go to Columbia College mm -hmm. and that's where I went. and. I just kind of followed suit with him and my parents were totally down to help out and I also got like a scholarship through my oh, through my nice. state yeah through oh, wow. the state of Michigan yeah watch out Oof. watch out <laughs> poop on the street <laughs> yeah. um, anyway uh, yeah so I got like I got money through the state of Michigan to go to school so I left and went with my best friend down to Chicago and that's kind of where all of this like blossomed because in, we're, in our small hometown, you, there's only a ceiling where you can go. And like I said, I was like DJing at the cable access station, like mm -hmm. doing like hip hop shows. Yeah. So there's like this cap. And then when I moved to Chicago, it just like opened up even bigger. So I, I was able to like meet more people, play different types of events, go to different shows and even learn from other people that like were higher up in, in their career. So yeah. it was such a good thing. And then I just grew from there. And yeah. Was that when you started Autobot? No, no, I started Autobot when I was when I was in when I was doing the cable access show, it was Autobot. Oh. Yeah, it was definitely like a a teenage name that it's funny because I don't use that name at all anymore, but like mm -hmm. sometimes people will like refer to that. I don't know. I guess it's been retired for a generations. Yeah. Since Flusterdama started definitely, but Did you already put like a lot of tracks out under Autobot back then? Yeah, I mean I did. I it, like put out tracks is such a small who knows? Like, it's such yeah. a low thing, but, like, I, I would, yeah, I'd, like, put them out through the internet a little bit, mm -hmm. and, like, every now and again, someone would rap on one of my beats, but they never got, like, pressed on a, maybe, like, CDs and stuff were made, but nothing mm -hmm. official. I never got signed to a record label or anything when yeah. I was a teenager. What was the turning point where, like, music took up more and more of your life? It was seriously when, when this, like, Flosterdama stuff started, so, like, I... But so you weren't even that into it before it all started? No, I mean, I love, I always loved making music. And same with like the opposite of what I do design and stuff. Like I love designing, I love making clothes, I love doing all of that. But something about when I was, something, something turned when the floss stuff started. I was able to travel. And once yeah. I was, the first time I took like a, a trip for being able to do music, I was able to DJ somewhere else is when I was like, I need to quit my job and, and, and focus on this because all I wanted to do was travel. Yeah. And if that's all I could do from this, not even get paid, I would be down. And so that's mm -hmm. what I did. And took the risk, quit my job, focused on music. and. Oh, what job did you have back then? So at the time, I owned a little like moped shop kind of thing out of the mm -hmm. back of this garage in Chicago. <laughs> so I used to like like buy vintage mopeds off of Craigslist and, and, th and eBay and stuff like that. That's so cool. <laughs> Fix them up and then make them running or, or working or better and then yeah. I would sell them and then that, that was just like how we would make money it was just like this little side hustle yeah and then on top of that I used to uh, I used to work at Whole Foods so like around mm -hmm. the same era I like got a job at Whole Foods and was doing that moped thing on the side and yeah it all just snowballed yeah. and then I quit that and then yeah how quit did, both of those yeah how did you realize that you and Josh wanted to like be a duo compared to like just put out some EPs like maybe you and his name separately. Yeah, so we uh, it was weird. We 
we just threw a party in Chicago, and we then that was back when I was Autobot, he was J2K, mm -hmm. and we both just like wanted to throw a party. So we started throwing this party in Chicago. It was called Get Out of the Hood, mm -hmm. and then people wanted to book us as this du these dudes who threw a party. So we didn't really have a name oh. for the duo, and my other friend Josh, not Josh, who was in Floss, yeah. He helped us like pick the name, and he like called us Flaskerdamus. Wait, but from what did he? How did he? Even we were just it? like drunk, drinking on a porch. Oh my at, god! And like it was him and I just chilling on the back of this porch, and he said it. And then I, I texted Josh or called him at the time because it was that long ago. Yeah. And I told him the name, and we were cool with it. And so that's what we called the group when we were DJing outside of our party, and then we ended up just calling ourselves that at the party. Yeah. And then when we were able to get booked with that same name and tour with that name. Damn. How, what, how, what were like the very early songs of Florsa Dama sound like? It's <laughs> all good. Uh, yeah, the, the, like some, maybe some stuff that you didn't even put out. What did it yeah, yeah. Like? I mean, the, the first few songs of Floster Damas were just mashups. And they were things that we actually did with, with when we first started Floster Damas, it was all vinyl DJing with like turntables. So what we would do is like, Josh may, might play an instrumental and then I would DJ in an acapella, like a vocal over the top of like this beat, two different songs mm -hmm. and make like a live mashup. Yeah. And so we used to do that live, but the first songs that we ever put out were just versions of that. So we would hit record on our computer and he would be on one turntable, I'd be on one. And then we would just live DJ these two songs together and release it as a song. That yeah. was like the first song, like just a mashup. <laughs> What would you say got to like the turning point between like being just local DJs and even getting some buzz? I don't, I don't, I really don't know the actual turning point mm -hmm. from when we became like, yeah, just local dudes and then we were able to get the shows. Like we, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't even know. We had some friends, like I had a friend who lived out here in LA, uh, this kid, Jesse Lee, and he ended up just booking us out of town because he knew we were kind of buzzy in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I think something about that made other cities want to book us as well. So then something it just like snowballed from there. We were able mm -hmm. to get one out of town booking and then another one and then another one and then more people wanted it. And this is the era of MySpace too. So we were using MySpace to promote oh ourselves. God. And I think with MySpace as well, it was just like a social media platform yeah. that people would like put our songs and our mashups on their page and then it helped promote us as well. Yeah. It's early SoundCloud vibes. What kind of branding did you have back then in like the MySpace days? Do you remember how your page looked like? Oh my goodness. There was probably a lot of animated GIFs. Like <laughs> definitely. It was definitely poor color choices. I know that. Like <laughs> this is like this like electric era of like super neon colors yeah. and like this oh kind God. of 80s revival shit. So I know it was ridiculous. I, I can't recall it, but I, since I knew web design, I was just like adding all the weird bells and whistles. I'm sure your cursor on your mouse changed when oh, you got to the page too. Yeah, it, damn those vibes. Yeah. I kind of miss that though. It was like I super know. cute, like sprinkling glitter and stuff. I got to bring those back. Bring back the sparkly <laughs> cursors. <laughs> and then how did you get like, do you just, did he also quit his job and you just kept doing yeah. more stuff like more yeah. seriously? It was cool. He worked in a promotion company at the time, so he was able to promote our shows while he was doing his job. So he worked for Vice Magazine, delivering Vice Magazine. Oh. And then he was working for this other company that he would hand out flyers. That was how he got paid. So yeah. he would just leave our flyers out on all of the, all of those places he'd leave other people's flyers. Yeah. So it was like, it was perfect. He was getting paid to promote for us. So it worked out really well. When did it click to you to focus more on branding? Well, so, okay. So Floss has been doing, it, Floss has been around for 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, this this new version is only a few years in, but he, for the the first five years, yeah. we, we like, we're just kind of doing the DJ thing. We really didn't put out much music. We were just kind of like touring, making money that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of just fell off. Like in 2010, 2011, just no one booked us anymore. Like Was it because you didn't have original tracks? That's what it was, yeah. yeah. We didn't have music. We didn't have anything. And we kind of, when we had a second chance, it was like, how can we do this different like how can we fix this and do it differently so around 2011 and 12 is when we started putting out our own original music mm -hmm. and again it was still a form of what we were doing live it was like like when we when we perform live we would take like a hip-hop instrumental and put like or I'm sorry like a dance music instrumental like a house song and put out like a trap mm -hmm. acapella over it or vice versa put like house music a house music song and blend it with the tra actual trap song like yeah. a, a fucking Lex Luger song so that's what we were doing and then we kind of ended up just taking that idea and just putting it into production and we started making our own beats mm -hmm. and then that went from there and once once we were able to get exposure again we were just like let's focus on this branding let's do things a whole let's everything we did wrong before let's do it right now yeah and the stuff that we did right before let's enhance it so that's kind of what we did and 
2012 and beyond, we just like turned up on all of that and just built the branding up. Yeah. And it was kind of cool. Like a lot of the ideas came out natural from that too. So like we would wear our hoodies on stage and then people called us hoodie boys. And then, mm -hmm. then behind that, then everyone else started wearing hoodies and they calling themselves hoodie yeah. boys. And so it just, it was like this natural thing that we would do a little bit and then the fans would do a little bit. And we like, instead of like, yeah insulting that or pushing it away we embraced it and just kept building it and so mm -hmm. it was like half this whole hoodie nation everything was half built by the fans half built by us mm -hmm. were it's you cool. inspired by something for all your branding like i think back then like electronic producers weren't even really oh, yeah. pushing that as hard so was it something like outside of the music forum that you saw like artists who were doing certain things yeah so it was yeah there was no one in edm doing the branding stuff we were like mm -hmm. some of the first dudes with like a full-on yeah. merchandise company we had like Crazy. we had our own clothing line aside from the music yeah and no one else is doing that now like all the djs do that and yeah. all the djs are talking about their brand like even that term wasn't even a term yeah and they're also talking about like their fans they call their fans whatever it is yeah so, so for us it was just some natural thing but now it's like something you have to do mm -hmm. and i don't know if that gets i don't know if it gets pushed to the wayside but anyway we it was just all natural for us to do that mm -hmm. Do you think it's because of your backgrounds, like him in promo and you in web design, that you became more of like a branding duo? Maybe. I don't even know. <laughs> I, 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 that, I've never even thought of it like that. Maybe. Like, yeah, he, he definitely worked at like a agency that like could teach him a lot of those traits. Mm -hmm. And definitely for me, like I, all of, even to this day, like huge percentage of the branding and all of the clothing design and everything is me, is what I, is what I've designed for us. Yeah. So, Maybe that's what it was. It was just natural for us, though. It wasn't It wasn't like, okay, I have to brand this out. I have to design this thing. I just wanted to make some cool shit. I wanted to make a vaporizer. I wanted to do all these things. So it was just super natural. But to, to go back to your question, there wasn't anyone in EDM doing this before us. We had to kind of mm -hmm. make the mold. And the only people we could look up to that have succeeded in it were people like Insane Clown Posse. Mm -hmm. Like they have their, their fans are like the juggalos. And they and they ride or die for insane clown posse. That's like that's their whole life. That's how they live for it. And yeah. once the fans started building up for floss, we we're like, we need to like, just as much as insane clown posse rides for the jugglers, we need to ride for hoodie nation. And that's what we did. And like that's why I'm continuing to do floss. Like yeah, the, the, they've ridden for me and like kept food in my belly and kept coming to my shows and keeping me doing what I love to do mm -hmm. that I'm never going to like leave them. I'm going to keep this going. Do you think there are any disadvantages to such hardcore branding? Yeah, there are disadvantages to it. Like for me and with what we've done in Floss, like the, the funny thing is that people know that they know pretty much know us from like the mosh pit hard mm -hmm. like trap dudes. But yeah. over all of these years, we've made like these chill songs. We've made other types of music, even house music and stuff. Yeah. We've released these other genres. But the stuff that we're known for is the super hard trap stuff. Mm -hmm. And so if we if I like try to make music outside of like hard trap, the mm -hmm. fans get bummed Damn. because they're like, oh, this isn't you or is this really you? Or, or like, it just doesn't, that's the only yeah. thing about the hardcore branding is like, if you step away from your brand a little bit, some people will follow, but a lot of people like resist. Yeah. So how about from like the more merch or like show aspect? Are there any disadvantages? No, like, do you find it hard to like, I guess other than the music, like change directions, like because they're so used to your logo or so used to like certain stage setups. Yeah, well, no, I think that that's, I think that that has, I haven't really diverted too far mm -hmm. off of the branding for the live show. Like every year I design like a, a new stage setup that's like next level and crazy. So mm -hmm. I don't know, like that, that hasn't really, I haven't really changed up the vibe of the live show. So I don't know, I haven't really seen it that much there. And then yeah. the clothing, like, yeah, every now and again, I'll do something off the path. It's so funny. In 2013, we were making dad hats. Mm -hmm. and everyone all, everyone was making fun of us. They're like, why are you making those cheap hats? Those are cheap hats. Cheap, cheap hats. And Not like, everyone. Or <laughs> well, no, that's what, exactly. We were like the, definitely the first dudes in EDM making dad hats. And yeah. then on top of that, like we were some of the first people doing it and adopting that trend. And that's, I think, where the, where the branding comes off. But if you ride for Hoodie Nation, if you ride mm -hmm. for Floss, you know we're going to be doing some stuff ahead of the curve before anyone else. So. Yeah, I think a lot of fans, I searched your name, like your own name, and then the second thing that came up is your wife. So oh, can, really? you tell, <laughs> can you tell them more about like how you met her or what she does? Yeah, yeah. So so my wife, we've been married for, we just got married, I'm sorry. We've been <laughs> yeah. together. We've been together. It's on your Instagram. Yeah, uh, we just got married. But I, uh, I've been with her for 10 years and... Yeah, she's been by my side through all of this. And she's super yeah, creative. That's crazy. Yeah, it's wild. She's super creative. <laughs> what a journey. No, it's this has actually been, yeah, it's been 
Floss has been a crazy journey and our relationship has been a crazy journey. Yeah. Because <laughs> being with a, a touring DJ is like a hard enough Oof. as it is, I'm sure. Like, yeah. So I totally ride for her and like definitely had to lock it down and marry her if she's been by my side yeah. like, this whole time. What does she do? So she is a manicurist for like celebrities. So she oh, does wow. she does like nails for all the all famous celebrities for print and and also just for like fashion shows and things like that. So she's she yeah. She's just like, she said she does the hand jobs for a living. But that's <laughs> that's, so that's what she said. That's not oh me. Oh my god! <laughs> How do you think you've grown and grown as a person since you've started? Man, this is. I've grown so much. Like, th there's so many levels of how I've grown. I mean, for one, I've been doing this shit for 12 years. Mm -hmm. So like, you, how could I not grow in 12 years? Uh, I've also like spent a good chunk of my youth doing this touring thing. Yeah. And, and now I'm like, I'm get, I'm becoming, a, I guess, older now. I'm married. I'm trying to do like the settle down thing. But I guess the main thing that I've grown uh, by doing this, like I grew up in a small town mm -hmm. in the Midwest and like there wasn't much outside influence there. Like even like it was pretty white. It's pretty basic. Like, mm -hmm. but for me to be able to travel and just like meet different types of people and see how different races have experienced life and see how different people experience life, it's just made me more empathetic to everyone out there. And I'm very blessed to be able to go and, and meet all these different people and live a very open-minded lifestyle. Like that's something that I think if I were to stay in my hometown, I would have just been sheltered and like mm. not seen the world the way it is. Yeah. So. Yeah, since you're like settling down, are there like changes with your career path now? Like maybe like the shows are less or something? No, no. I I mean, I I just got married and did the settle down thing <laughs> right right as this like the floss split up happened. So I've been oh. like, so I've been trying to just maintain and like let the fans know the shit's not going to die mm -hmm. and keep the floss, the floss train going forward and just been dealing with all of that. And so like just when it becomes time to settle down, I have to like keep this, keep the train going. So yeah. this whole year has just been kind of getting the ship back on course and like back to, to focused. And now that that's kind of a, in a good spot, like the, the next year I'm going to probably, probably slow down a little bit on touring, yeah. but turn up the music even more. It's cause I'm going to be home a lot more oh, and I get to chill. True, and yeah. Like I said, I'm moving out here to LA where I can work with so many people. So I'm looking forward to the the music and the next levels of floss yeah and and also settling down and enjoying life a little yeah, bit yeah <laughs> for sure last question what do you want to be remembered for i guess bare bare minimum aside from the floss stuff i just mm -hmm. want to be known as a as a good human mm -hmm. like i really do like i i don't the celebrity side of this or whatever it is the z level celebrity that floss <laughs> is or whatever <laughs> no. it is is doesn't matter to me like mm -hmm. i want people to remember me as me like yeah. I'm not the I'm not Flosser Thomas. I'm not the dude who was in that. I'm not the guy that helped start Trap. I'm Kurt, and so I just want to be remembered. Yeah. For me. So yeah, that's I it. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>